Can you see the slides now? <laughs> okay, very good. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, uh, I don't hear you very well, but uh, I hope uh, you, you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you very well. Very good, very good too. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Alessandra Caputi, and I work for the Human Resource Department uh, of uh, the Chiesi Group. So I'm really happy to, to be with you today uh, because I would like to share with you some information about this company, but I also would like to give you some tips regarding job opportunities and uh, how to find a job in a pharmaceutical company. So uh, let's start uh, with, uh, with the story of our company. I don't know uh, how many of you already know TSD Pharmaceutical, so I really would like to give you some uh, few details. TSD started as a small family company in 1935, so we are talking about uh, 80 years. This is a, a, an image of uh, uh, the, the first building built in Parma. Actually, this building still exists. It's the headquarters of the company. Uh, we are still using it, so I'm calling you from, from this building, actually. It's a little bit different, of course, but uh, it still exists. So this is the company yesterday. This is the company today. So, as you can see, um, the company completely changed. This is the new R&D center that uh, we opened about uh, two years ago, and this is the, the, heart, the heart of our company. So, it's a, it's a new impressive building uh, that represents the evolution that our company made in the past uh, 10 years, actually. So, talking about numbers, uh, I can tell you that we have three um, industrial relation sites, one in Parma, one in Brazil, and one in France. We have five R&D centers and 26 direct affiliates all over the world. So, these 26 affiliates are in uh, all the five uh, continents. As you can see, you have the world map in front of you right now. So we have 26 direct branches, but uh, we distribute our product in more than 70 uh, countries. I mentioned before uh, the R&D center. Um, the, the, what I would like to share with you is that the, the headquarter of the company uh, remain still in Italy and actually in Parma. So in Parma we have the new R&D center, uh, we have another one in the United States, one in UK, in France, and a brand new one in Denmark. So for a total of more than 400 people, so more than 400 scientists that work for our company. We have many products, uh, of course, but uh, uh, the, the, the main uh, core business of the TC Group uh, are respiratory diseases, so products related to respiratory diseases. But we also work in cardiovascular disease and uh, uh, in neonatology and special care. So the, the, the message that I would like to share with you is that uh, this company is mainly focused in respiratory disease, but uh, in the past two years uh, changed a little bit this, the business strategy and is investing very much so in special care. When we talk about special care, we talk about uh, uh, rare disease, very rare disease, gene therapy, stem cells, and you know, when we talk about stem cells gene therapy, all the time we think of United States. Okay, Casey is doing everything in Italy. So this is very important for us. We are very proud to share with you this information. Um, 
So, of course, uh, we, we work in this area, but who works uh, in this area? We have more than 4,000 employees at worldwide level. More than 1,500 are based in Italy. And as mentioned before, more than 400 are scientists and work for our research and development activities. Uh, you know, I, I just have 15 minutes, so please stop me if I, uh, you know, if I'm going too fast. Uh, let me show you uh, this slide because this is, I think, is very important to share with you this information. Um, as you can see, we are talking about uh, revenues. In, from 2007, 2007 until the 2012, the turnover of this company doubled. I don't know if you ever heard of the economic crisis. I bet yes. Uh, so this is the reaction of our company. But uh, the information that I think is very important for you is that in uh, five years we hired more than 1,000 new people in our company. So I think that uh, the key message that uh, I would like to share with you is that the company is growing and the company is hiring. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Okay, good. So this is very important. The company is a very good company and we hire about 100 new people every single year now. So the trend is always up. Uh, I know that uh, uh, all of you is very familiar with this slide. I hope so, probably. But I would like to share with you this slide in order to tell you that uh, the entire development of a new drug is made here in the new R&D center in Parma. So in Parma, we take care of the entire development process. So we have a person dedicated to the preclinical activities, to the clinical activities, and of course, post-marketing and safety. So it takes about from 8 to 12 years in order to have a product into the market. Why I'm showing you this slide? Because now I would like to go with you in each phase. No, we and had, we had a presentation on that this morning. So if you can skip this part. I don't have a scientific background, so no, I'm sorry, 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 Alessandra, we presented this uh, this morning. <laughs> uh, can you skip just this slide and uh, proceed? Because we had a presentation on this this morning. Yes, uh, yes, okay, of course, uh, I will go up. I just wanted to share with you this, uh, this information because what I prepared for you yes. is uh, for each phase, uh, which kind of uh, background we look for. So. Um, I don't know if you already saw this one. If you can do it very quickly, because this morning we had half an hour presentation on this. Uh, Professor Thomas explained very well on this part. So if you okay. can just add to me from the point of view of Chiesi, if there is any specific thing that you want to share with us from the point of view of Chiesi, because the general background is very well known to people in the room, because uh, some of them are experts and some others are also very smart graduates with knowledge in the, in the field. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I, it, it's very hard for me to understand, uh, but I will go very quickly. I understand that I have to go very quickly. So, um, I just to tell you that uh, in, a, in a pharmaceutical company like TSD, all the time we look for uh, people with a degree in pharmacy, in biology, biotechnology. We look for physician with chemistry. This is good for discovery, but it's also for preclinical and also for all the clinical phase. But in the clinical phase, we also look for people with a degree in uh, statistics. Mm -hmm. So this is just what I, I what, this is what I would like to share with you. Um, when we talk about uh, uh, pharmaceutical 
political compound by TFD and scientific background, of course we need to talk about the research and development uh, job opportunities, but uh, we can also uh, talk about marketing, for example. I prepared a word cloud uh, uh, for you. You can see some keywords, marketing, strategy, planning, uh, um, product, brand. So uh, also for marketing uh, uh, job opportunities, we look for scientific background. And of course, this is also for the industrial operation. I just, uh, you know, give you some example of a role where we look for people with a scientific background. So, for example, continuous improvement, quality control, corporate production, quality assurance, health security and environment. So, this is all, you know, just information that I would like to give you, details that I would like to give you in order to be open. Of course, uh, uh, with a scientific background, with your background, you could evaluate the research and development, but a company can be also interested in your profile also for other job opportunities. Um, so, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, I would like to share with you some tips uh, regarding how to prepare CV very, very, uh, you know, in, a, in very shortly. Um, just few information in few pages, so we really don't have time to read the 25 pages of CV for every single candidate. The CV must be easy to read, we need to understand what we want to share with us. And please, never forget that the CV is like a business card. It's your business card and all the time you must do, prepare your business card from time to time. So. Unfortunately, sometimes I received some TV with uh, Dear Novartis, <laughs> Dear Roche, it's not good. <laughs> so please, uh, be, pay attention to these papers. So personalize, even hobbies are important. And of course, if you want, you can introduce yourself with a letter, with a cover letter, clear, concise, and honest. It's very important for me to, uh, I mean, very shortly also to the job interview. Of course, I know that you you, you, you know all this, this for sure, but be on time, do not show up uh, unprepared. So, for example, remember the name of the person you should meet. Do not answer with yes or no. Try to give details. <coughs> Ask the questions and be curious all the time. Um, try to, you know, give more information about yourself to the interviewer. You just have 50 minutes, one hour, and in one hour the interviewer needs to decide if you are the right person or not. And this is a very important uh, part, in my opinion, because you never you should never forget that people from the human resource department are often professionals with a humanistic background. For example, I'm a sociologist. Uh, my colleagues is a psychologist. So we are the person in charge of the first screening of your CV. So we are not technical. How should you prepare your CV? Use keywords, be short, put the score of your degree, give us information about your skills, about the complexity you manage. For example, you know, public presentation, English presentation, budget review, and so on. Okay? You will have time to share technical information during the second interview with the line manager. I don't know if it makes sense. Yes, yes, thank you. This is a useful, is a useful information. Then we can discuss it uh, later. Can you hear, yes, sure. can you hear me better now? I, I, uh, yes, uh, yes. Because now uh, no, I'm closer uh, to the computer, actually. So maybe okay. you can hear me better now. Yes, this is a very good information. Maybe we can discuss it a little bit later, yes. Yes, sure. Yes, I think it's important, you know, because um, 
for example, I, I recruit people for resource development, but also for the engineering part, uh, or so of course I can't be prepared about every single role uh, in, uh, in, in the company. So, you know, please help the recruiter in order to understand your CV. Uh, I would like to spend just uh, a, a, a few seconds on where to find a job. Of course, I'm talking about Chiesi. So, if you go on the Chiesi website, uh, you can have all the information about the company. Uh, or, for example, about pharma, but uh, now uh, LinkedIn is becoming more and more important. <clears throat> also for scientific. So, LinkedIn is not a social network, it's a professional network. It's free. So, my, my suggestion is to have a LinkedIn profile because now the company needs to save money. So that's why we are going on LinkedIn to find people. What I mean with save money? I mean that we are not using a headhunter anymore. We are trying you know, to do it by ourselves. That's why LinkedIn is so important now. Uh, but, you know, this is, I hope this information, uh, this slide is important for you. What it is looking for? Uh, we have uh, different uh, job opportunities uh, open. As you can see from the slide, uh, we are looking for uh, the quality assurance department, uh, for uh, uh, the clinical development, uh, we are looking for physician, uh, we are looking for marketing, we are looking for statistician. So please, my advice is that if you are looking for uh, job opportunities right now or into the future, just go on the TSD website, send our CV, and, uh, you know, because we have about 30 job opportunities open right now. <coughs> so, this is, you know, this is just what I want to share with you. If you would like to have everybody, uh, I would like, if you have any questions for me, regarding uh, anything you want about TSC, about, uh, I don't know, job interview, about job opportunities, I'd be glad to answer. So, thank you very much, uh, uh, Alessandra, for this uh, very nice presentation. Uh, we know each other, I'm uh, Luciano Sazo. We met uh, before in Sapienza, do you remember? Yes, yes, okay. I remember you very yes. well. Okay, so uh, thank you very much again. I have actually a couple of questions and then maybe we can open uh, the, the discussion. Because sure. what, we said, what you said is very interesting, you know, how to write the CV, the motivation yes. letter, etc. So my yes. students ask me very often this question. I mean, if you say Chiesi is uh, open in several positions, yes. is it better to aim uh, very precisely and say, okay, I'm really writing a very precise motivation lecture for uh, a specific position, or is it better to keep it more open, to allow the company to uh, select me, even if maybe the profile does not really match exactly? Uh, this is a philosophical <laughs> question, I think, uh, for me, and then, uh, can you tell me your, uh, your approach? Yes, sure. Well, it's not an easy question, of course, uh, but uh, my, from my experience, uh, I can tell you that uh, if you see a job opportunities, uh, for example, on the website or on LinkedIn, uh, you can send your uh, the candidate you send the, 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 the resume uh, very, you know, dedicated to that job. So, you know, if you're looking for a quality assurance position and you find a quality assurance opportunities, the CV must be strictly related to the opportunity in the quality assurance department, okay? But uh, my suggestion is also to be flexible, because sometimes when we receive a very good CV, we call the candidate and say, listen, we have your CV and we think you could be the right person for TSE. 
But uh, are you evaluating also the quality assurance department, uh, or would you evaluate uh, other opportunities in the company? Okay? So, my suggestion is that the answer should be why not? And not know why. <laughs> yeah, but this is still, uh, you see, the problem is still there, right? It's not easy because sometimes, again, you have uh, an open position for quality assurance, and then you have another one maybe related to research. And then, of course, as you said, and I fully agree, you have to write the CV really for that position. So let's say you put it uh, really uh, in the CV that whatever you have been working on, uh, let's say, medicinal chemistry, and then because uh, uh, there is a position open in the Department of Medicinal Chemistry. Of course, you neglect some other information. And then young people are really in this uh, position that they don't know which is better because they, they feel that maybe they, they will uh, miss some other opportunities, you know, not mentioning that. But on the other hand, we agree that if a person says, okay, I'm interested in uh, uh, whatever, regulatory affairs and research, uh, that is not also something very nice not to do. Yes, uh, yes. Point, uh, and uh, I totally agree. Uh, otherwise, I think that, I mean, for example, in our HR department, we are only two. Okay, two people. So, uh, my suggestion is uh, to, if, if you, if, if uh, okay, you know, this, I think that the difference is when a candidate, when a student, is very, he knows exactly what wants to do in his life. Otherwise, if he's not sure, so he is very uh, determined, he, he, you know, he can say, I want to work in the quality assurance department. If he's not so uh, convinced, my suggestion is to be open and say, you know, I'm looking for a position in the research and development uh, department, for example. I'm open to evaluate uh, job opportunities in the research and development department. The problem is that sometimes they don't know exactly. They don't know <laughs> because they, they don't know that they just maybe they did a, a thesis at the university, so maybe they never spent uh, you know, enough time in a company or they just saw a company from outside, whatever. So they're not sure. So, in a way, this, I'm trying to interpret it, what I know about my students. Yes, I mean, so it's not easy for, for them you know, to choose. Uh, no, no, I know it. Because the problem is that uh, students, uh, when they graduate, they don't know, they don't have an idea of what to do. So, you know, the orientation part, uh, uh, my suggestion is to go on Google and go to the website of the pharmaceutical company and see and try to understand uh, that uh, we also have a regulatory department, uh, a, a patent department, a pharmacovigilance department. Uh, a preclinical, a clinical. So I understand that it's not easy to understand what to do, but uh, I think that now, uh, for example, the internet uh, can give so many information to students. For example, on LinkedIn, if you go on LinkedIn, we created a group. The name is Work for Chiesi. This is a platform where people can talk directly to me. Like uh, Alessandra, I just saw uh, an opportunity in uh, quality control. Do you think that uh, my profile could match? Okay, so use the new tools that we have. Be prepared. That's very useful. That's a very useful advice. Any question from the audience? I can repeat it because I think she cannot hear you well. But uh, we have some young uh, students and graduates in the room. If there is anybody willing to ask uh, uh, Sandra Capuzzi from the human resources of uh, Chiesi. And he, yes, there is a one over right there, yes. I just wanted to know how the uh, unsolicited, unsolicited application, if I send my CV um, without referring to a particular position, <coughs> Maybe I can't find a position that suits 
story, friendship, mm -hmm. and the, the person is, ask, is asking something similar to what we discussed before. I mean, if you, yeah. you allow the ge generic applications in a way, I mean, uh, maybe a person is looking for a list of opportunities uh, you know, on your website and there is no open position for uh, her, her or uh, his profile. Is there a way to send it anyway? I mean, do you accept generic applications or? I think yes, uh, if you need, if we accept uh, generic application, of course uh, uh, we need uh, to remember that it's a generic application. Mm. And, and we received uh, more than uh, uh, 700 CVs every day. Mm. So, uh, you know, I think that it's very important that a person say, okay, first of all, I send a generic application. And then every day I go on the website and see what's going on. And then I go on LinkedIn and I send my CV to Alessandra Capuzzi. And then, and then, and then. And then I'm sure that CSE will call you back. So it's not the company that will call you if you put your CV three months ago in the website and it's not an update CV anymore. It's a, the candidates, it's the student goal to find a way to keep in touch with the company. So of course, uh, of, of course it is my suggestion. I see many candidates that send me CV from LinkedIn, from About Pharma, from uh, the website, from everywhere, but they come here for an interview. Unfortunately, the competition now with the economic crisis is a very, you know, it, it, it's not easy. We know that. Yes. There is another but, very good uh, website, it's beautypharma.it. It's also yes. excellent. <laughs> Okay, so another question very quickly, said sorry we have to move on because we are a little bit late. But thank sure. you very much for your time, it is very useful. You said that the first screening is done by the human resources, of course. So yeah. the candidates will face, uh, of course, very good uh, uh, people selecting them, but without a scientific background. Yeah. So, yeah. how can you handle, I mean, uh, the same... Uh, for research and uh, development, of course, uh, do you recommend uh, the students still to be very detailed on their scientific experience? I mean, to put uh, uh, information about their publications if they have some, or a description of their thesis, or if they've been abroad. Uh, uh, how can you uh, can you give us some advice? Uh, okay, when we talk about scientific profile, publication are important, details are important, of course. But we can forget that I'm a sociologist. So help me, help me to understand use keywords. For example, just prepare a summary regarding technical skills, PCR real time, Western blocks, ELISA. It helps me. Okay? So just a short summary with keywords for the first screening. And then, you are going to have the opportunity to share details, to share details regarding your publication with the head of the department, okay? So, it, 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 you can be details, and you can share details also with the HR department, but always remember that we don't have a scientific background. So prepare a summary, prepare a cover letter, Tell us uh, which are your uh, which are your main uh, competencies and where analytical or biological, you know. Just just prepare a summary for us. Okay. Thank you very much. One last question concerning this uh, uh, one thousand people that you are going to hire in the near future. Can you tell yes. us uh, which are the departments in which uh, uh, these people will uh, find one of your position? Uh, well, uh, our company is a uh, research and development based company. So now uh, we are exploring uh, very much so everything that is a special care. 
So probably the research and development uh, is the area where we are going to hire more people. So for example, uh, clinic, uh, clinical, clinical, uh, but also uh, pharmacovigilance, for example, regulatory. So research and development anyway. Okay, thanks. Another question is coming actually from the website because as you know, as you know, there are uh, also many people uh, connected online and uh, are watching you in streaming. And one of them asked, do you prefer uh, people just uh, uh, fresh after the master's degree or uh, you also value, let's say, a longer experience, a PhD, or how do you balance these different characteristics in the Yes, sir. Uh, of course, uh, we look for uh, uh, young graduates. Uh, usually, young graduates start uh, with an internship that can be, you know, uh, for, for a job with a permanent role, but usually young graduates start with an internship. But of course, uh, we have also a position where we need uh, more uh, competences. For example, if we share uh, again the slide uh, regarding job opportunities, you can see that the senior pharmacologist can be a young graduate. Uh, if you if we see, I don't know, the clinical research physician, we, we are looking for a physician with some experience, or the clinical study manager, we are looking for um, or again, the new product planning manager, we are looking for a person with PhD. So, you know, it depends. Fortunately, our company is hiring and we hire both young professionals and professionals with experience. Okay, okay. so uh, I think it's getting a little bit late, but mm -hmm. Alessandra, thank you very much for all the information you shared. I think it was very useful for, uh, for the audience. Thank you. Uh, Thank so you for the invitation. If you, if you want to talk to me, if you, if you yes. need more information, just send me an email or LinkedIn, and then I'll be glad to, to Thank you very much for the opportunity, and best regards to Professor Patakini and to the other friends in uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.